Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see a lot of faces here, eager to learn. My name is uh, Victor Derek. I'm the president of Nicola Tesla Educational Corporation. We were formed only about four years ago, and our whole mission is to educate the students. All of you, this is the most important part. You are our target audience. Our feeling is that if we educate you, we will inspire you, and that will lead to a greater innovation. As mentioned, uh, clearly, this is a connection of Hamilton, Nikola Tesla, and a group called the Five Johns. So, take you through a, a presentation deck, and hopefully you will, by the end of it, you will be able to. Uh, so, uh, just to start off, in June of 2017, our organization was successful in play, placing awards in 52 of the 60 elementary schools, and of course, this was one of the schools that received that award. And we will we plan to repeat that this year. We to date we placed over 100 awards to children, whether it's elementary or secondary school kids, primarily either in the, directly into the schools or at a uh, science fair. We've also awarded a $10,000 scholarship. Now, our scholarship is an annual scholarship at McMaster University. It is geared only to two uh, municipalities, the Hamilton Wentworth Region School Board and the Halton Region School Board. So we are gonna continue with all of those and I'll introduce you to uh, one further award that we just approved last night. Questions are welcome. So by all means, if you have a question, raise your hand and ask it, but I'll ask you some questions. And sometimes for participation, I will have some t-shirts to offer you. Now, one question, does anybody know what a patent is? What? what? Patent is called a patent. Okay, well, let me explain what a patent is. When somebody invents something, they register a patent. That protects their invention so that nobody else can use their invention. They get the royalty and they get the reward for that. It's like copyright. You know, you've heard about schools, you're not allowed to plagiarize a book. You have to denote it with exactly where you're getting your information from. So a patent is just more of a product, protecting a product versus what is written in the book. So I'm gonna show you some stuff and I'm gonna see if anybody recognizes. Does anybody recognize what this is? Yes, it is a potential generator. What is the opposite of a generator? Generator produces power. What uses power? That's correct. So you're correct. This is a generator or it can be a motor. I'll show you. This is a motor. It comes off one of my power tools so that I can plug it in, use it as a table saw or a router or anything like that. So that's what it does, okay? The reverse of it really is truly a generator. Any idea what this is? Well, it has wires going into it and it spins. I see the hand back there, yes? Wow, you are bang on correct. That is incredible. This actually is the motor that came out of my furnace. All right. You will find these motors in practically every appliance in your home. If you have a dishwasher, it has one of these motors. If you have a blender, mixer, almost anything that it runs on electricity, runs on one of these motors. So they're a very important element in this. Any idea what this is? In the red over here? <laughs> no. Over here? Sorry? No, it's not a fan. Actually, this is Nikola Tesla's motor. This is the motor that he invented in the 1880s, late 1880s. The motors we showed you just now, 
they're all built on the same principle. So this is what is at the root of all appliances and anything that's electrical that we use, whether it's in business, commercial, or anything like that. All right? So as I said, Nikola Tesla invented it. Now let me just play a, a couple of uh, videos for you. In 1891, a Soviet scientist demonstrated his latest inventions before an awestruck audience at Columbia University. Troops held in the hand of Mr. Tesla, a reporter wrote, appeared like a luminous sword in the hand of an archangel representing justice. Nikola Tesla was already famous. The scientist whose experiments with electricity were destined to transform daily life in the 20th century. We live in an electrical world. We take it off the brain, we have a light bulb, we run our refrigerator, air conditioners, our electrical motors, all of that is all directly back to Tesla. A hundred years ago, he pointed the way toward robots, radio, radio, remote control, the wireless transmission of messages and pictures. He dreamed of harnessing the wind and the sun to make free energy available for everyone. When you think about electricity, you think about Edison. But Tesla is just much more of an original American than, than Edison. Tesla had a lot of obsessions and odd phobias, and yet he was enormously popular and uh, celebrated. They did not stop him. At the turn of the 20th century, Tesla was a planet. Millions of Americans knew his name. But only decades later, he was forgotten by all the few. He doesn't have a disciplined imagination. He has a fertile imagination. And so, he's, he's kind of crazy. Oh, he's a genius. No, no doubt about it. But he's an idiosyncratic genius. His luxuriant imagination was the source of his genius and the cause of his downfall. Now let's hear what somebody else has to say about Tesla. So think big. If you can simply print off all of Tesla's contribution, modern civilization will come to a grinding halt. We'll be thrown back later than 100 years into the past, back in the days of steam engines and, and steam locomotives. That's a contribution that Tesla made. In some sense, he's the architect. In some sense, Tesla is the architect of modern day civilization. One more Tesla one. is that he was, I think, key of much of his well deserved fame and also patents. He was in on the discovery of radio. He was experimenting with X rays before the announcement of the discovery of X rays. He pioneered the AC motor. He realized that everything he was in around us, the lights in his room, the lights of New York City are all energized by AC motors and AC power. So in other words, Tesla laid the foundation of a second industrial revolution. Okay, so as you can see, Tesla had enormous contribution. Now most of you probably do not know about this, because you were all born after that. But in 2001, we had a major power outage. The whole eastern seaboard, US and Canada, was blacked out. So your teachers will recall that. We didn't have power for approximately a week, and everything stopped. You couldn't run your fridges, you couldn't run your air conditioning, you couldn't almost do anything because you didn't have electricity. There were little pockets here and there, sporadically. Incredibly, you'll learn, I'll show you a little later, there was a power plant that did not go down. And that power plant is part of this presentation. So, let's now get to the five Johns. The five Johns are ironically all first name John. That's why they refer to as the five John. John Patterson, he was the visionary. And then there was uh, Sir John Gibson. He went on to become the Lieutenant Governor of the province of Ontario. And then we had Dickinson, Sutherland, and Moody to round out the group. They all had one important thing. They were business leaders in Hamilton, and they needed power. So they started learning, especially 
John Patterson of what was happening and what Tesla was doing and what was happening in Niagara Falls. And in 1894, he visited the first major power plant that was being built using Tesla's technology and he realized this is what needed to come to Hamilton. So they were collectively the big leaders and they created a company called the Cataract Company. This is John Patterson. As I said, he was the visionary and it connects him as you can see, even the hydro towers are in there. That's part of it. Now, one important thing was that in that time, before Tesla's technology came together, they used something called DC electricity. That's direct current. Direct current only goes in one direction. That's your batteries. That's your direct current. So that was all by a, name, a man who we heard his name mentioned already, Edison. So Edison's big thing was DC power, but the big problem with DC power in those days, they could not transmit it over long distances, which basically meant you had to put a power generating station very close to the user, possibly two to three kilometers apart, and that's it. And in those days, all the power generating stations were coal power fired. So they were very, very dirty. A lot of pollution, and it could only serve, serve areas where it was dense population. So that's why all the wisdoms at that time started telling these five Johns, what you want to do, you cannot do. Because power cannot be transmitted, what they were trying to do, over 50 kilometers. Well, that was all impossible until Nikola Tesla. 1888, he patented the whole system. That's why I use the word to you, patent. He patented the whole system of generators, transformers, and motors, so that he could produce the power at one place, push it up to very high voltages, transmit it over a great distance with little power loss, and then transform it back to the voltages that we can use in our homes. So that was the important thing. One of the key members, was a guy, a man by the name of George Westinghouse. Westinghouse was a very prominent individual in the States, and he became, his company became very prominent in Hamilton as well. This was his plant, part of his plant, that's now boarded up, but this was part of his plant that was built in 1897. Now, keep in mind some of these dates that I give you, you'll see how they, they come in very important. Westinghouse bought Tesla's patents, and they started fighting what's called the War of the Currents against Thomas Edison and the DC electricity. Tesla's electricity is AC. Now, he didn't invent AC and electricity. He just put everything together, all right? You'll hear, we'll talk about the SU, uh, the Q, power generating station number one. That was built by the Five Johns in 18, and started functioning in 1898. So at the 110th anniversary, the Q Falls and Ontario Power Generating pointed out that it was Tesla's invention that sparked the whole new age for it. This is the station. You can see the pipes coming down. That They bring the water to the bottom, and at the bottom in that building, there are power generating units, and that's what you see on uh, those turbines. They are the ones that are generating the power and they ship the power to Hamilton. When it came to Hamilton, this building was the first building to receive electricity. That happened August 25th. The building still stands there. It's not being used really effectively. It's storage and some other stuff, but you can still see part of the name of that cataract, Hamilton. That's what was. So this is a copy of the Spectator from August 26th, 1898. Power is turned on. This was an incredible accomplishment of that date to transmit power over 50 kilometers. Less than two years earlier, power was sent from Niagara Falls, New York to Buffalo at half the distance. So when they went to this distance, this was doubling the distance. This was the second longest power transmission in the world. Incredible accomplishment. So Patter, Pat, uh, Cataract Power really came in, as we said, August 25th, all right? To accomplish this, they wanted to do it in Niagara Falls. They couldn't because the Canadian government gave the rights 
or Canadian or Ontario government gave, gave the rights to American companies for all the power on the Canadian side, and the Americans were gonna ship the power across the border. So they had to find another place. And the place they found, some of you may have heard of Brock University, there's a waterfall, it's called the Q Falls. So they decided they were gonna do it right there, but they needed a constant supply of water. So on the map up there, you see arrows pointing to where the plant is and a couple of lakes, man-made lakes, Moody and Gibson, named after individuals. The electro Canadian Electrical News basically pointed out that this was an incredible accomplishment. So they talked about how, how this will go down in history. And yet, we here in Hamilton, being at the center of that history, almost know nothing of it. I knew nothing of it myself until I, I got onto this mission. When power came to Hamilton, Hamilton got the nickname the Electric City. Why? We had the cheapest electricity in all of the world. All right? And it was all thanks to these five drones. What was the impact? Well, the impact was huge. Between 1901 and 1912, you had a lot of companies starting to work. You heard the name Selfo maybe in the news recently. That company dates back to this, this time period. And now it's coming back to life. The FASCO Westinghouse was a major employer, industrial, international harvester, Otis Elevators. All of these companies were here. And they all came here because we had two critical things. We had a safe harbor that we can bring products in that they need for the industry and export. And at the same time, we had power. Major ingredients. So Hamilton became the heartland of, the, of major industry for Canada, simply because we had those magic ingredients. And we had power here for almost a decade before the city of Toronto got power to the quantity of power that we had here. So we had a clear monopoly. So what happened is, when you have jobs, a lot of people need, are needed. Immigrants started coming to Hamilton. A lot of communities were established as a result of that. Prosperity team. This picture is actually the picture of the first teenage driver. That teenage driver happened to be right here in Hamilton, and his name is John Moody Jr. He was the son of John Moody. All right? So that was the first automobile in all of Canada, and was right here in Hamilton. And in a few years later, Hamilton already, as it indicates, had 6,000 vehicles. But what's important is not the number of vehicles, but the ratio of vehicle of people to vehicles. It was 15 to 1. We had more, a greater ratio than some of the major centers of Canada or the U U.S. Toronto, Montreal, Boston, New York. Prosperity was here. They had train systems, like many trains, now we're talking about an LRT. Really, we had that. We had that, we the Hamilton, the city dismantled all of that over the years, and now we're talking going back to LRT. That's one of the things that they needed, was power to run these so-called radios, which extended all the way over to Oakville, Grimsby, Dundas, and that brought, made Hamilton the center of everything. Hamilton built electric uh, train locomotives. They were built here, it's clean. Now, you go to Quebec, you see most of their trains run on electricity, that are local commuter trains. They're talking about doing the same thing with the goal lines. So as we can mention about cell phone, the fast so this is the industrial heartland. The growth was, was phenomenal, as I mentioned. 1897, Westinghouse came to Hamilton. They came to Hamilton because they knew Hydra was coming into Hamilton. They knew everything that was unfolding. So they got the jump on everybody and they needed power for their industry. The growth attracted, as I mentioned, a lot of immigrants. If you check some communities, in particular if you go down Martin Street, you'll see quite a few churches. Take a look at when they were built. But I'll point out, the first Polish church, 1911. 
The first Ukrainian church was 1912. I'm Serbian. My church community was established in 1913. These people all came here, and we can a lot of us can kind of link our roots to this development. So the test, the impact of test on Hamilton, of course, because of Tesla. As I mentioned, 1888 was when Tesla patented everything and released to the public. 1896, the the five Johns, they actually consult with Nikola Tesla. Will this work? Will their plan work? And Tesla looks at it and says, yes, they will. And he gives them the approval. And by 1898, power comes to Hamilton. And it is the first major city to have it. And as I mentioned, it gets called the electric city. So who is Nikola Tesla? We saw a few little video clips. There are tons of them out there right now, by the way. But Tesla was born in Europe in 1856. He moved to US to meet his big person that he was admiring, Thomas Edison, in 1884. Soon after that, the two of them had a falling out, and Tesla went his own way. 1896 was also Niagara Falls power generating station. So that was the first major power generating station using this technology that was built. The next year, of course, power. Uh, two years later, power came to Hamilton. Tesla himself is credited with 315 patents. He touches all kinds of stuff, as we've already seen in the video. He's got 128 major publications. This book right here, this is just a sample. Some of his patents are right in here. This book talks about the thousand inventions that changed the world. Tesla's in here three times. So he is, he is a very important person from that perspective. And he died in, in 1943. Now let's hear a little bit about his the story about him. Nikola Tesla. In a museum in Belgrade, Serbia, there is a great plated spear that rests atop a marble pedestal. What's inside, you may ask? Pure science. Or in other words, the ashes of Nikola Tesla. A Serbian American scientist who is the most underrated inventor of the 19th and 20th century. At a time when electricity was still a luxury, Tesla researched it independently, contributing to every aspect of science and technology. Take his rotating magnetic field and alternative current motor. Those allow us to send power across the entire nations without building substations in every 1.5 kilometers and with much less danger than all direct current methods. Though vocally deplored by the likes of Thomas Edison, electricity arrives in our homes this way, even today. Another great invention, the Tesla coil, creates high voltage electricity at high frequency. With this, you can do cool things like powering light bulbs without wires. Basically, this idea will lay the foundations for all modern wireless technologies. Today, Tesla coils are still used to ignite the gas lamps that light up the streets. Among other things, Tesla discovered the resonant frequency of the heart, inventing many electric gadgets, remote control, fluorescent, and neon lights, which he then had bent into letters. He recorded radio waves from outer space and had a hand in the field of robotics. Once he built a machine that, when switched on, created an earthquake nearly demolishing an entire neighborhood. Well, <laughs> that one was a bit dangerous. Tesla was a true genius, he spoke eight languages, memorized entire books, and built functional devices straight from his imagination without writing anything down. He was 200 centimeters tall, popular with the ladies, but had a lifelong dedication to science. Every day he worked from 9 to 6, stopping for dinner at exactly 8, and then resumed his work, often until the middle of the night. Having been celibate for 86 years, broke and alone, Tesla passed on. Having made so much of our current technology possible, Nikola Tesla and his contributions were largely forgotten. But the legacy of true geniuses, though, never really fades, right? They just take some time off inside a dual-plated sphere. So, I'm going to just show you a couple of things. This is a picture of a transformer. I took a look when I parked my car just outside across the street, and I noticed 
on the hydro pole, there's a transformer out there. It functions the same way as it did over 120 years ago. This technology is found around the world. All major systems are built that way. Yes, you got a question? No, the trans that transformer brings, because when they bring it to the city, they bring it into thousands of volts, like I'm talking of hundreds or more thousands of volts. Then they have major transformer stations to bring the power down to a voltage around 3,000. That 3,000 voltage is brought to that transformer. That transformer transforms it down to power that we use in our homes, which is 120 volts or 240. So that's what those transformers do. They're not for cars. They are part of the grid to make, make electricity function into our home and make it into a safe power that we can use. This is a copy of the patent for Tesla's induction motor. Now that we talked about the patent, one of the important thing is that Tesla also had a patent on those generators. And his deal was, for every horsepower that generator produces, he will be paid two dollars and fifty cents. Now think of this: this is 1890. To be paid two dollars and fifty cents, and the amount of electricity that is produced by his generators at hydro generating stations is humongous. So why was Tesla almost unknown? He was not rich. Well, it was very simple. He wanted to make sure his technology works and get, gets to the public. So there was a big fight between Edison and Westinghouse, and they tried to enforce that patent rights on Westinghouse since he bought the patent. Tesla said, what's your problem? You're gonna be bankrupted, Westinghouse? He ripped up the contract. He gave away his patent rights, entitlement, had he not done that, Bill Gates, or anybody you can think of right now, Tesla would have been richer than any of those people you can think of. That's how much money this was worth. But he gave it all away. Why? He just wanted to make sure that his system was distributed and common people, everyone around the world, could benefit from it. Not himself, not any major corporation. So everybody else got rich. Tesla remained, and when he came to the US, he had four pennies in his pocket, and guess what? He had no money when he passed away. So he gave out all, gave it away. So we talked about a little bit, and some Tesla coil. There it is. It's on the screen, there it is. It acted up yesterday. We had it function working yesterday, but last night, it literally acted up, and I'll show you a little bit of a video that I have of it, but unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it for you right now. In the early days, that element, or small pieces, components of it, were in radios and televisions. That's what made wireless communications possible. Without a Tesla coil, it didn't work, okay? So we mentioned already Tesla's best known for AC electricity mo induction motors, hydroelectric plants that are used all around the world. Even now, the Tesla electric car. But guess what? He didn't invent the car. Tesla. Motors uses his motor, his induction motor, to power those incredible machines. And there are other components in there that are used as well. Other things, radar, spark plugs, Tesla coil, transformer, generators, speedometers in your cars, okay, and turbine. You got a question? Yes? I wish I did. <laughs> I've been in a couple of those vehicles, they're incredible vehicles. But no, I don't own one, unfortunately. So as I mentioned, Tesla died, and we have already heard that, totally unrecognized. But let's listen to what this clip has to tell us. All right, I got a look for you. All right. Who invented the radio? Uh, that's a hard one. Well, you know, I finally got you. Now, it's just that I don't know if we want the person that think invented the radio or the person that's actually invented the radio. Well, in here it says. Marconi, right? Yeah, it ain't it? I always wanted them to think of it in the radio. In fact, we got a Nobel Prize for it in 1909. 
truth is, a guy named Nicholas Tesla found the basic idea for the radio in 1896. Same idea my opponent used for his pattern 30 years later. Tesla fought my opponent until the day he died in 1943. Same year, the Supreme Court ruled that my opponent's pattern was invalid, recognizing Tesla as the inventor of the radio. All right. <coughs> All right, well, the court that he's talking about is it was the U.S. Supreme Court, and that's Marconi. And as you heard, he, he received the Nobel Peace Prize for it, for transmitting with the radio, and yet technology was Tesla's. Incredible. Uh, that's what we talked about. A lot of people got very rich using Tesla's technology. Modern day products, let's get to those things now, guys, okay? They all depend on Tesla. All right, so you'll find it as we already talked about in your homes. It powers everything. Think of this, your furnace runs, some of you may know how it functions, it operates predominantly gas, is what we use now. However, the furnace will not work unless the fan is working, and the fan is an electric motor. Remote controls, I presume all of you know what those are and you'll all use it, Tesla. Robotics, again, Tesla, all right? So all of these elements are right here. So we talked a little, the question was raised about the Tesla car, so let's see what, a little bit about it. Some of his inventions were ahead of his time. And a few of them were ahead of our time. But some of them, well, Let's just say we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And while Mr. Tesla never got to see his legacy, we like to think he'd be pretty pleased. Cell phone. Wow. But did you notice it? Back in 1926, we prepared the material so that the teachers will have that. We will provide all of that. The research that I've been doing over a few years is immense, and there's a lot of that stuff. So, as I said, grade 8 history. Patterson in 1894 toured the first power generating station, and in 1896, the company was formed 1897, Westinghouse, impact of, his, of them coming to Hamilton. Hydro arrived the following year. Hamilton becomes the electric city. The growth in the city is incredible in the first decade of the 20th century. Hamilton was the leader of innovation. We need to go back there. We need to innovate. Well, how about a school name? That's a school that is under construction right now. We have a petition uh, pushing for that, uh, which is in excess of 7,000 signatures. So you're more than welcome to uh, let your parents know if they want to uh, support the idea. But what's important is for you to learn more. And here is just a few internet sites. PBS, BBC, National Geographic. This isn't some uh, person in their garage making a little video. These are very renowned organizations that are uh, preparing material for this. Go to the Hamilton Public Library. Countless documents are there that you can find. All right, videos on the internet. There is the first one, it's called Nikola Tesla Experience. It's actually put out, it's really a, like a 3D uh, scenario. You can download the app, you can make it into a standard and just use your uh, mobile device and you can walk into almost like rooms and see presentations from uh, the, uh, the way it presented virtual reality of Tesla talking about different elements. So that's available, that's what that uh, slide is all about. They got all kinds of books, Indigo or chapters, they've got 
over a hundred different products available there to buy. Some of these books came from there. I want to show you a little bit about the Tesla coil. So, as you can see, the Tesla coil actually shoots out arcs. This coil shoots arcs up to two feet. They're very high voltage. We're talking in the thousands of volts. And it is in very high frequency. I've actually been touched by these arcs indirectly, and it gives me a little tingle, but it doesn't hurt me. So it's really strange, but it's because it's very high frequency. What it also does, if you'll note on the uh, picture on your right, those are fluorescent light bulbs. They're the ones that are right here. They light up with no wire. That's the box, as you can see, it has no nothing plugged in, and I would have loved to have demonstrated it to you, but unfortunately it didn't work for me today, because of last night. Same coal, uh, thing with a long fluorescent tube. This one's three feet long, okay? But watch what happens when I turn the coil on. Notice how the light just lights up. That's what they were talking about. He appeared like a magician waving the light bulb because nobody understood. Now I know how it operates, so it's not magic. But in those days, he was like the magician. All right? 